Good morning or night, whichever the case may be. This is Sharon Alexander with Alexander Arts, and this is my first YouTube video. Let's hope this goes well. If it does go well and you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and, you know, share it. Go ahead and share it. Today I have had a request for a dragonfly. So I've gone to some of my favorite copyright free people and Upsplash had this lovely picture of a dragonfly on a lotus blossom. This was put out by Alan Perper. If you think his work here is quite lovely, I know I do. Go to Upsplash and see if you can find some more of his work. Now I'm going to put this up on the wall where I can see it. You won't be able to. And we're going to start off with the first step of making a painting. That is drawing. A lot of people can, you know, do drawing without anything beforehand. As you can see, I like to do a little bit of drawing and sketching. And here we have a nice blank page. So let's start with this nice blank page on this Canson XL paper. It's not terribly expensive. You can usually get pads like this on sale pretty cheap at places like Michael's and other art supply stores. But since we're only drawing this out, it doesn't matter what quality of your paper is. If you want to use copy paper from your copy machine, go right ahead. I happen to like mechanical pencils and a really thick lead. This is one by a company called Bale, and it's a 2.00 millimeter auto pencil. I have some erasers on standby because nobody's perfect and everyone makes mistakes. So, let's get started. Our picture over there has the lotus blossom with the dragonfly sitting on top, and it is a teardrop shape. Most things are made of shapes if you look at them, so we're just going to start with that a little bit. Now, if we went with their picture, the dragonfly would end up being up here. Mm, not very dramatic. So let's um, bring the lotus flower down a little bit and cover about two-thirds of the page with it. Nice teardrop shape. Let's start with that. By the way, if you are enjoying the background music, this is made by a Saeed al -Badai. He's on YouTube, and he has graciously collected some nice copy-free music for everyone to use. I'm rather enjoying it myself right now, so, you know, if you like that, go ahead. Check him out, too. Let's get ourselves our first petals here at the bottom, which also conveniently start off as teardrop shapes. And see that? I've already made my first mistake. So let's pull out our nice um, Uni Automatic Touch Eraser. I like white erasers of all size, shapes, and uses because they don't leave a bunch of stains on your paper. I also have this little teeny tiny one someone gave me by Mono Zero Combo. And I haven't used it yet, but little, little teeny, whoops, here we go. Little teeny tiny nib on this thing be useful for some small touches. Anyway, back to getting this drawn. And my first picture, let's see, the first petal is about here. Looks like the second petal's probably about twice the height, so let's go over there. And it has a little bit of a curve. The curve comes out towards the petal on this side. There we go. Let's give it a little bit of a bump out to give it a little bit more of that 3D effect. It's a little more smoothing, so here we go with our next drawing mistake and getting this smoothed out. Okay. And curve this around a little bit because petals are not going to be completely flat to that teardrop. You're always going to bump it out a bit. There we go, and a little bit more that we're not going to want there. Let's see, the next petal is on the opposite side, and it's just a little bit taller than this one, so let's go up about here, and it's kind of cupping the outside of this shape. So now we're going to bump this out just a tiny bit so that it's curving in, and it looks like it comes down into the next one right about there. So let's curve that out to meet it. Okay, that's the outer edge. Okay, 
All right, it comes into the petal a little bit, comes up right about here on that picture. So, curving that line back in again. And get rid of the outside of the teardrop shape because we no longer need that line. So right about now you're thinking, okay, this is really great, rambling on. So who are you? Well, I am a longtime self-taught artist from the Ozarks. I really, really like nature. And I like drawing nature. I like drawing flowers. I like drawing bugs. I like drawing the occasional animal. Although I'll confess I don't always feel like I'm really great at that part, but sometimes I do it anyway. I like to use a lot of inks. I like to use a lot of pencils. I like to use watercolors, acrylics. I haven't really done anything with pastels or oils, but hey, who knows if, uh, if everybody likes this channel enough and subscribes and gets enough of their friends to watch this channel, maybe eventually I'll get monetized and who knows, maybe I'll be able to try a few new things. Never a problem with using new things. Not a guarantee I'll like them, but I always like trying new things. New foods, new places, new experiences. And let's face it, some of us are introverts and don't do that very well, but some of us really like that, or at least like watching other people do that. I think I'm probably in the last category of watching other people do that. I know that uh, I've watched a variety of YouTube channels myself, on different places, different cultures, different people. I even know a few languages. Well, not full languages, maybe um, partial languages. A little, little bit of French, just enough to say... Um, oh, there goes the words I know. I can say adieu, like goodbye, and hello. Well, adieu, that's not even it. Oh, I've already messed up now. Because I'm thinking about art. I'm not really thinking about languages. <laughs> and I've gotten quiet again. And something about this isn't quite right. This needs to come up just a bit more. Just a bit more. And this actually curves up just slightly. So let's take that out. That one actually cups because that is another petal. Bump it out a little bit. Okay, now let's go back and fix all my mistakes. This is not smooth enough, so we'll just take that outer edge out and take this out here because it came up. And that's that outer petal, so I need to get rid of that inner line. And we'll be smoothing that out just a little bit more. There we go. Anyway, um, things I like to do other than paint. Honestly, I really like to paint, but I also like things like coin collecting. Hiking when it's not terribly hot outside. Unfortunately, this is being made in summer and it is in the hundreds out there not got any plans to go hiking today. Now let's see, I'm looking back at my picture again. We've got the rough shape of the flower. So now I'm going to look up at that dragonfly. The dragonfly has got two large bulbous eyes that are basically on top and a mouth to start off with his head. And his head is a little teeny tiny thing sitting right at the top. I'm going to exaggerate that just a tad because I would like the dragonfly to be a little bit more of a feature of this picture. So we've got a head up here with two big bulbous spots. Let's start with what would be his right eye on my left. And we'll start off with just a little bulbous shape. It's got a little bulbous shape here. And the other eye appears to be touching it, coming out looking kind of like an aviator's helmet. And the mouth part comes up a little bit, so fit the curve to his eyeball here. Looks fairly good. And his mouth comes down here. There's a little bit 
probably not a nose piece, but we're going to call it a nose piece. There's a little bit of a black spot here, and another little black spot here on his pretty little turquoise head. And like a couple of mouthpieces going here. And a little bit more of his face here. Actually, it looks like that eye drops down just a little bit more, so. Looks like I've got another shadow piece right there for black reflection. Okay, a couple of extra lines here I don't need. Not sure I like the way that reflection looks, but maybe it's because this outer edge is kind of concaved. So let's uh, smooth that out a bit. And that probably just made it worse. Okay, that's pretty decent. Okay, we've got some body coming up here now. Can we even see this? Yeah, we can see this. A little body coming up here now. His body is sticking up about as far up as the head is. So we've got a head here. We've got a body up here. Coming up to about there and meeting up this side of the eyeball. So there's that. The other side is meeting about there on the body and coming up approximately a few centimeters above where it was, so let's keep a little bit of a curved line there for a body. As I said, that comes up a little bit, and then it comes down where the wings meet the body. All right, now I'm going to reach up where you can't see and measure the length of the wing compared to the size of the bug. It comes out a little bit further than the end of the bug. The head and body of the bug are about half of the length of the back part of this bug. So, that, one, two, so the end of the insect is going to be right about here. And starts behind the wings, so we're going to end up doing a little erasing, but this is the easiest way that I know of to get this bug started. He's got a little nice body here and looks like the body part swoops down a little bit here for wings and meets up about in the midpoint between those eyeballs, just slightly to the left of those eyeballs. So there's that and bringing the body up and down. There we go. Rough shape for the butter for the butterfly. Ha! Huh. No, this is a dragonfly. Definitely a dragonfly. Not a damselfly because the wings are all spread out and dragonflies keep their wings spread out, unlike damselflies who like to spread them out. Now we've already done the measurement on the wing and said that it comes out a little bit longer in distance than the body. So a little bit longer in distance than the body. And this comes out angled. Looks like it probably a 45 from the other one. Let's angle this up just slightly. Okay, I'm going to use my other fingernail to mark where that needs to go because this wing is not much more than a long, thin line coming down to the body. And I'm going to work on this wing just a little bit. We're going to give it just a little bit of depth because of the thicker parts of the wing that provide support. And there's a little bit of the actual wing showing on the tip here. And it comes down and then it comes back out again and comes back towards the body. So we're going to get just a little bit of wing showing up there. Okay. Now the wings. This wing is, according to my little measurement, here, a little bit longer than this wing. So we're going to take this wing. We're going to add just a little bit of length. And this is an awkward way to do this. So let's use the other hand. So it comes about there, but not that far down. And we'll show you that some. Box 
about right. Okay, same song, second verse on that angling. We're going to want to put that line out there. And we can probably all hear my rabbit playing with a wing nut down on the floor. Silly rabbit. Okay, we're going to do that uh, edge thing again. Just that little bit of extra so that we can see the ridge that holds that wing steady. And then this one, the wing dips down slightly a little bit. So we're going to put a little down there. And on this, it comes out just a little bit more from the fat part of the wing. Coming up. Going down and going back in. All right, that's the first side of wings. The other side, we've actually got a little bit more wings showing. Let's see here. Yeah, same size, so let's get these. About there. Hey, look you. I know you're having fun down there with that wing nut, but that's enough. Rotten rabbit. And she's not going to listen. Oh well. Okay, so there's our first wing. And it's actually got a little bit of a curve to it because we can see a little bit of that wing. And it looks like it comes out about there. So take that and curve it around for that first wing. The one in the picture's got a little bite in the snow that wing, but we're going to ignore that because I think it'll look really nice having the full wing. Coming out right about there and slightly down. Okay. This one came out. It looks like that body I've got it way out there. Let's uh, trim that down some. Okay. Hmm. This wing seems a little different to me. Quick measurement here. Yep, they're the same. Okie dokie. It just doesn't look quite the same. Moving on. The next one's done another long, thin line. And once again, we've got the extra line here for the structure holding the wing out. And I can see just a little bit of that long, thin gossamer underneath. And this doesn't look right at all, does it? Well, let's fix that then. Let's bring this out a little bit more. This is why we sketch things. It looks a little better. This might look a little better if it were just a little longer as well. Never be afraid of mistakes. Never be afraid to fix them. I've made some pretty good mistakes in my time of drawing. Okay, you know what, I think I'm going to pull this down here so that you can kind of see what I'm looking at. So we can do a little quick comparison. Okay, let's move this over some. And let's set this down. And it may be a little harder to see this, so I'm just going to put this up here where we can see that dragonfly for a moment. See all those legs and little pieces. And because this picture is a little strangely shaped, this really would have been better in a portrait, I think. But he didn't take it in portrait. If he's listening to this, sorry dude, this would have been better in portrait. Here we go. Okay, now we can compare the two side by side. And we see that my dragonfly is bigger than the real thing, but you know, this could be a smaller blossom if we wanted it to be. 
and I can already see now that they're side by side that there are things I could change. The shape of the body, for instance, is a little wonky. It actually comes out a little bit right here and a little bit right there. And I've got it sticking out a little bit too far over there. So I'll fix those lines. Oh yeah, already starting to help. Now, same song, second verse on the other side. It comes in just slightly here and back out again. And probably a little thinner than what I've got it here too. At this point, we're probably to the point where we're not really so much trying to copy this picture as we are just trying to make it aesthetically pleasing. We're going to start leaving the realms of, this is what this looks like behind, and start going into the realms of, now what would make this look really awesome? I am going to add a few slight details, like the structures that hold the wings to the body. There is a slight line running down the center of this body, not quite center. And there are body segments running down the length of the body at various intervals. One right there at that line there. This one here. Pretty good sized gap in between those two, so I think I'm going to add one more gap just because I think it'll look nice. And there's a couple of lines that come pretty close right there. The body itself has got some interesting little lines on it right here. Looks like another little line that comes up here. And another one that runs along the side of the body. That comes down this side. Okay. Now, the only thing we haven't really done anything with yet are those legs. So, let's do something about those legs, because he's sitting in this really interesting position on top of this lotus flower. We'll call it the lotus position, just because it sounds fun. And he's kind of hugging the top of the flower as he sits here. Can't quite see all of his legs, but there's one coming out here and coming down. And then it kind of comes around and hugs the top of that flower a little bit. There's a little bit of a foot showing here. And a leg that comes down behind the flower. And another one that comes back down here. This front leg is coming out here at an angle to the rest. A little bit further out than that. Mm -hmm. Mistake. There we go. Okay, and it comes back and hugs this top part of the flower. So, right about there. And he's got the other legs are there coming down. He's got one that comes down and hugs right about here. And another one that's kind of hiding behind that one and coming almost straight down. There we go. Okay, and here we have a sketch of a dragonfly sitting on top of a lotus blossom in pencil. So how do we get from here forward? Well, personally I like to turn these into ink drawings before I actually do them in watercolor. So, we're going to keep our eraser and set our pencil aside. And I like to work in basically two pins. Good old Sharpie fine line pins. I just, you know, these are great. And for those little tiny fine details that you add on when you 
want something a little finer than 0.1 or maybe just one point. This is a 003 Archival Ink Micron Pigma Pen. And it has a very, oops, let's see, ah, here we go. It has a very, very, if we can get the focus to come in, very, very fine point to it. And it's just not going to focus. But take my word for it, it makes a very, 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 very fine line. Okay, but we're going to use that not immediately. And we're going to start with these petals on the bottom. Now, our picture here, you'll notice has a lot of little tiny veins running up the side of the blossom itself. So we're going to set that back down and we're going to mimic some of those lines. Not all of them, just some of them. But we're going to start off by doing the outline of petal. Just the outline of one petal. And this pen's a little older. It's not as juicy as I would like, so we're probably going to make a few mistakes here. Now, there are pencil lines on this, and I will be erasing some of these pencil lines. But don't do it immediately. Because if you try to erase while this is still slightly damp, you're going to smear it. And it's permanent ink, so it's never going to go away. So, just take my word for it. Don't erase immediately. Just go ahead and let it dry before you erase your pencil marks. And we're going to outline and draw over the lines we like. One by one, give them a good chance to dry. I'm continuing to outline the uh, lotus blossom here is a great way for the lines you do first to dry. Now that dragonfly at the top is going to be detailed. We're going to leave it for last. Right about now you're wondering. So you're going to do this in a uh, watercolor. Why go to all this effort? I'll tell you why. Because sometimes I like to go back and draw these pictures again. Also, by doing this in pen and ink, I get really familiar with everything. Where every line is, every pimple, every seam, every little detail of the object itself. So, I'm going to leave this big part in the upper part, and I'm going to switch to that little tiny micron bit. And I'm going to put in some of those veins. Now they run along inside here, and there's usually one that starts at the very top. So I'm going to start at the very top of the first one, and I'm just going to draw that fine line, which probably is barely noticeable on the camera. But trust me, it's there, and it will definitely make a difference in the drawing itself. So we're going to draw these lines out, and they all come down because they're cupping the bottom of this and curving up into the top of this petal here. And it's okay if the lines aren't perfect. It's okay if they're a bit broken, because all you're doing is basically suggesting to the person looking at this that there are fine lines and veins in this petal. And depending on how tight you want to do it when you get to the watercolor, you can suggest some of these lines in the watercolor. If you're not interested in doing that, don't worry about it. But the fact that I've already got this drawn on gives me a lot of possibilities later. For instance, if I want to draw and paint this out later at another point, I can come back to this and I can see these fine lines and details that I've got drawn on here and decide how far I want to take that. Do I want to take that as far with the detail or do I want to do it looser? If my drawing is basically just like the cartoon books that we give our kids and it's just a bunch of big pictures with no fine details, big eyes and big 
big petals and nothing interesting in between, just big blank spaces for them to fill, well, maybe you won't remember those details when you want to do a little more detailed yourself. But this, I can take this and I'll tell you right off the bat, I cheat. That's right, folks. I cheat. I'll tell you something else. Leonardo da Vinci, Picasso, all of those great artists, they had cheats too. They're probably not going to tell us what they are, but some of them involved sheets of glass or shined up metal like a mirror that they could hold up and reflect and get a little bit of an idea of what they wanted on their canvases and their papers without actually having to sit there staring off canvas for a long time. Now I'm sure Leonardo da Vinci and some of those others I've mentioned, Monet, some of them did their work in person. But you know, light changes. Light changes, the value of your light changes when you've got clouds. So many factors change your lighting and the way something looks, even just time. I mean, I'm sure that there are lots of things that don't change in a garden, but when you've got a garden, the wind blows. You've got animals that come through and do things. If it takes you a month to do something, the flower you're looking at died. So, you're going to have some cheats, something to give you, you know, your reference longer. These days we can use photographs. If we showed a photograph and how a photograph works to some of those old artists, they would sit there and scream, cheat. How dare you use something like that? You, why did you even bother with a painting if you could do that? Well, because we wanted to capture it, maybe. We wanted to capture it the way it was, but maybe we wanted to add our own artistic flair to it. That thing that says, you know, I'm not just copying nature. This is me. This is me doing art. This is me doing something with my talents and my skills. And I say talents and skills interjectedly because you can use them both. They're both things you possess. And people sit there and say, oh, I'm not talented. Oh, I can't do that. I can't draw like that. I can't paint like that. Nobody was born doing this. I could go dig out artwork from when I was a kid, and I'm going to tell you it looks terrible. Because that was a long time ago. I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was. But that was a long time ago. And I have spent years, decades, perfecting that desire and i say desire because at the time you know all, pretty much all kids do some sort of artwork maybe they don't draw maybe they paint maybe they cut things and paste them on paper maybe they just like stickers because no one encouraged them to go further or they just didn't have the desire maybe they were um into sports know, maybe they were into other things and they just never had that desire to draw things Maybe they didn't have that desire to draw things because they were told that that was feminine or a waste of time. And yes, I've, I've heard the waste of time before. I've heard, you know, you should be going out and getting in the sunshine before, you know, go do, out, go do something, you know, maybe it'll inspire you. That later, of course, when they saw that drawing was actually really cool and that the pictures were pretty. But some people just never, they never get that opportunity. They never have that desire or they're discouraged in some fashion. Maybe they're adults. Maybe they're retired. Maybe they're, you know, long past all these other things and maybe they can't go hiking or football playing or race car driving or whatever it is they liked doing that they did instead of drawing. And now they're like, you know what? Maybe I should take up a hobby I can sit down and do. And so they pick up a pencil or a pen or a brush and they turn to YouTube these days and say, now how do I do this? Well, congratulations, I don't really tell you how to do this, but I'll tell you how I'm doing it. And I've gotten off track. I was talking about cheats. So, anyway, cheats. My favorite cheat is called a light board. Wonderful piece of electronic. It's a lot like having a light table if you've ever heard of those 
which was basically glass or plexiglass. And you could take your photograph or another drawing and lay it on top of this and turn on the light and see, if not perfectly, see the outline of your picture that you want to use. Wonderful, wonderful little tool. Now I'm going to skip the top here and I'm going to do these legs. And because these legs are so skinny, I'm going to keep up with that Micron 003 and we're going to just draw those little skinny legs in. So anyway, I take those photographs and I take my own drawings. I draw my drawings to my satisfaction. And yes, I will take these and copy them and sell them at events as coloring pages for adults. There you go. Extra income if you can sell them all, get a little bit of something, and other people get to enjoy the hard work of studiously drawing ink prints like these. But I don't just stop there. I save them for my own purposes. Why should I stop there? Because I take those and I put them on my light box. And the details that I want, I will put on to my watercolor paper or my canvas using that light box. Well, maybe not the canvas. I have other ways for canvas, but I can talk about those some other time. There we go. Now we've got those little legs on there. And we'll go back to the flower. So the light box is definitely my friend. And you can usually get, you know, a pretty good size one off of eBay for 15, 20 bucks. And it is a 15, 20 dollar investment that is well worth it. Just trust me on that. It's worth it. I have used the snot out of the one that my dad first bought me. And I'm considering if this YouTube channel does well enough and I eventually get enough money to cover this table with one that's big enough to cover the whole table. Which would be nice and it give me a better looking surface than this old gun table and, well, actually I guess it used to be a sewing table before my grandfather used it as a gun table. And I'm now using it for art. But hey, if that appeals, you know, Always uh, send me a little donation and I'll put it towards making this little art studio a little cooler. You can go to sites that I've got listed below like Redbubble and DeviantArt and buy prints. If you've got something a little more specific, I will eventually, hopefully, get my Etsy shop or the one I've got planned for... Um, Facebook opened up again, and there are going to be links to Facebook and my Etsy, even though it's empty, and, you know, all those great things you can come and see and buy from, they're all going to be listed below. And if you want to follow me as I do some of the other things that I don't always plan to video, you'll be able to see snippets and snatches and even finished things if you want to follow my Instagram, which is also listed below. And now you see I've done a little mess up here because I did not do that center line first. But you know what? That's okay. We can add more lines and no one will ever notice that I didn't follow through with my own instruction to myself and start with the center line. Okay, and that does the lotus flower. Now we're going to go back to the bug. Get that bug. Get that bug. Hmm. Let's go ahead and start with that face. And there's highlights on top of both eyes right here on the very top. But we're going to ignore those for the moment because we are still in outline mode. I love the pen because once you have gone to the pen... This is it, folks. You're not erasing that. If you don't like what you've got at this point, you're just going to have to start over with a brand new piece of paper. And it happens. 
It definitely happens. Hmm, I just noticed there's a little turquoise line here on his nose. So, let's put that in there. That's turquoise line. And we're also still going to use that fine micron and add those other fine lines. And I'm going to add that little highlight at the top here. This is actually a darker one. So we're going to add it too. Because these are darker reflections on those multifaceted eyes. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see, the wings go over the body. So let's start with wings over the bodies. Start with those wings and come down. And now we've got those little structures there, so we're going to suggest those little structures. And I put that fine supporting structure line there. Now I'm going to switch pins again because I want to give the impression these wings are thin, ethereal, gossamer, and we just want a little bit a thin line to show those wings off and to give you the idea that these wings are pretty thin. And there are details to wings, but we'll get back to that after we have drawn out the basic outlines here. And I'm going to do something most of you won't be able to do because I'm going to switch hands so that I'm not covering up the picture. Not as smooth. Now we'll I'll stick to that for painting and we'll just get to a weird angle. And there we go. Get that supporting structure. That works pretty well when I'm painting, but I apparently need a little more practice to get that to work for regular drawing. Okay, back to that micron. the Sharpie. I'm going to start off with the supporting structures. We're going to stop before that curve because that is where that wing shows off that thin, thin line. And we're going to put one darker line alongside A little bit further than we did on the others because there's thin line structures in between those two structures on this because of the more detailed approach. And out. That supporting structure. Okay, back to the micron. A little bit that comes up on this side. And a little bit that comes down on the other side. And we're going to come back up and get this bigger structure. Curl it into that darker line. There we go. Like I said, we'll come back to those. There's some fine line details in those wings, and we will come back to them. But for now, let's just go ahead and get the rest of the body outlined here. We've got the tail tip back here. Probably easier to start from the bottom. Dip it in, pull it out, round it off. And there. So we got that. 
We're going to do all those little fine lines in here with the micron. Speaking of microns, what's micron? We've got those little lines on the body. Into something on that side. Like that. Okay. We've got those body segments. Let's put those body segments on there. body segments and I'm basically done with the sharpie so we're gonna set it aside okay now for all those little fun fine lines that go on those wings you don't really see a lot of them in the photograph on these sides here so we're just gonna you know we're just gonna wing that haha -ha. I'm just gonna put some fine lines running down this And there are interspaced segments on the real wings, so we're going to put some very, very small lines in between these small lines to give the suggestion of the structure of the wing. And if I look at the structures we can see on these wings, they are not right next to each other. So we're going to want to go between those lines that we have drawn on the wings beside them and just a suggestion of the wing structure. Believe it or not, whether or not those lines just go straight through or are close to each other is very important for the eye because if it's not quite right and you've got all these lines just running into each other counter to the way the structure is really made, maybe people won't notice maybe they've never seen a dragonfly but something about it will instinctually say that there is something not quite right something about that that just doesn't jive the way it should let me go with that awkward pose again there are people that can and do get away with a looser approach at things. I mean, like, if we're doing this in watercolor, we can leave these lines out entirely. We can blur it with all kinds of colors, pinks and things that maybe you not really see in a real dragonfly. There are purple dragonflies and blues, and greens, and reds, and golds, and all kinds of colors. This doesn't just apply to dragonflies. But there are some things that we instinctually look at and say, no, that's, that's not the way that should be. That is a fantasy, because that's not the way that thing looks. That doesn't mean it's not beautiful. But there's always going to be something about it that you say, yeah, it's a cartoon. Or that's just some fantasy, or that person didn't have a reference when they looked at it. And I'm not smashing that kind of thing because I do it all the time. I do. I love to just pull something out of my head and say, okay, I'm going to draw this. It's so like this wing. Because I'm just doing this off my head and this isn't actually in the picture, it looks like I just drew a bunch of bricks on there. But I'm going to leave it because it still looks pretty cool. And I can't erase it. Not at this point. So now we're going to move on to the other structure where I can actually see a little bit of where I went wrong with it. Because there are perpendicular lines running along the side of the wing. But then they flare out. And they go off into this direction. So I'm going to do a couple of lines along here. For that structure and requires in order to fly and I'm going to start curving them out 
flaring them towards the end. There we go. So you can see that looks much better than this does. But we also have this wing kind of flattening out there, so we can't really see that. Now let's add some of those supporting structures between the longer lines. Making those suggestions of little supporting structures between longer lines. Because let's face it, those details and those wings are part of what draws us to dragonflies. I mean, they're fast, they're pretty, they come in lots of colors. But if we take the wings off a dragonfly, we just have one more bug. One more thing flying around our faces while we're trying to sip our tea on the porch. And if that's what we had, people might not even like, but like them very much because they wouldn't be as pretty without the wings. Those pretty, gossamer, translucent wings catch the light as they fly by in the summer breeze on their way to take care of some of the pests that we like least, namely mosquitoes. Because these guys are wonderful mosquito catchers. They eat thousands of these mosquitoes every night or evening or whenever they come out. And they're just wonderful little things to see around your yard because if you see them, you know that you have a healthy ecosystem. Not unlike those frogs we hear at night and evenings when we're sitting on the porch or even with our windows up because they're so loud. <laughs> well, some of those are probably cicadas down here, but you know. There we go. And here we have a dragonfly sitting on a lotus. It could be anywhere. It could be a pond. It could be your back porch. If you've got a water garden on your back porch, might be. Might be. And we haven't quite spent an hour on this, but we don't have another hour to do the painting. So we're going to stop here with this finished drawing. And the next video I make, we will take this drawing and I will show you how I use that horrible little word, cheat. I'm gonna cheat, and we're gonna use that light board, and we're gonna take this picture, and from this picture, we'll draw a quick sketch without all the extra details, and we'll set it up here where you can't see it on the wall, and we will make ourselves a beautiful watercolor painting from this little ink sketch I have made. And in the meantime, you can go over, like, subscribe to the channel, look forward to the next one. And if you want to see more of my work, you want to see some more of the things I've done, you can go over to Deviant Art, which will be listed down there, and you can see my full gallery. I also have a little cartoon character known as Morris the Mouse. He's a children's character, and he's fully categorized and on display on my Deviant Art. If you want to see pictures of my works in progress, or if you want to see things I've been doing or hear updates on the actual studio itself and maybe even a few uh, public events I'd like to go and see and be at, go check out my YouTube channel or my Instagram and you can follow me there. Links below. It, this has been Sharon Alexander. I hope you've enjoyed watching me draw. Who knows, maybe you can try to do it with me. And I will see you next time. Bye guys.